Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Stylosa and welcome back to Overanalyze, which is of course our wonderful Overwatch coaching series. Today, we're going to take a look at something a little bit different. We're going to take a look at a borderline GM player. This is Salt Mines, amazing name. It is a support main player. However, in the email that was sent through, um, he says he can't actually seem to establish himself into GM. He only kind of hovers around 3.9k, 4k-ish, but he'd really like to push forward and get like above 4.1k, maybe even sit sort of in mid-GM and kind of operate from there. So what we're going to do in this video is it'll be a little bit different from the usual um, overanalyzed where we generally focus on a lot of basic stuff. We focus on a lot of, you know, positioning of your hero, a lot of like, um, you know, just really basic stuff. Right now, I can categorically say all these guys in this team know how to play the heroes they've just selected. Often what happens at this level is you get beat because the enemy team have a counter comp to your team or your team is maybe... Um, you don't have DPS mains, right? Things like that. So there are a lot of things which are out of your hands. You can see here, look, we've we just seen the season high. The player was, you know, just over 4K. Obviously, he'd like it to be higher. So we'll have to uh, see what actually happens in this game. So, like I said, the focus of this is generally going to be on the way Anna is trying to control the game, the way a main support needs to play. So I'm actually going to bring in my experience of working with um, professional level players. Well, not working with them as such, but being being privy to their scrims, let's say. The way a support player plays in GM is totally different to every other kind of level of the ladder. Because at GM, you're not, I mean, you know, nowhere near a pro's level of skill, but you're, you need to understand what the pros do, right? This is stepping forward, becoming more than almost like the sum of your parts becoming more than just yeah i know when to use sleep dart i know when to use bionade i i understand my general positioning and oh yeah all this it's all great that's fine but you need to go beyond that so let's just take a look at what's happening here so your setup at the moment is kind of interesting because we're sitting in a bush this isn't too bad because we're not just going to get instantly hit by um whatever they've got coming out of spawn because generally people would stand further back. But I, the, the, the reason why this position is actually good, let's just pause this, um, is you're out of sight. So you're already demonstrating to me that you understand the vulnerabilities of Anna, which you should do. You are playing a, a, essentially a GM level. So this is good. I'm not, I'm not too fussed with this. I mean, we're fighting them close here, so we can totally... I mean, I imagine you bio nade and sleep, but yeah. So anti, this anti, is... Anti. Good call on the anti. You see the push? Great call off the other support. Push forward. So th this is good. So straight away, that's a good team engage. What we need to be doing now, though, is this is down. Well, we're kind of just healing people up. This is cool. It's downtime. We need to think about, like, now, this will happen all of the time at this level. You now need to think, what are we doing now? What's the plan? Like, uh, it's not the plan just for you. It's the plan for the team. How are we going to take the next fight? What are we going to do? Now, I'm not saying this is all on you. This isn't like you have to do this every single game because it looks like already that this um, Brigitte player is quite vocal, um, was calling for the team to push forward, which is really good. Now, if that happens, if somebody does take control of a game, be cool with it, right? Don't try and overrule them. Just be like, hey, it's fine. You work with it. So again, we're taking up the same position. Again, this is fine. We've lost our Zen, though. This is a problem. See, Zen, Zen has died there. That is actually a major problem um, because without Zen, we're going to lose a lot of damage because without Discord Orb, we're not going to be able to melt their tanks that fast. Our positioning here, you know, while it's okay, could it be better where Zen is dead? I mean, obviously, Zen has just died because he's been hit by what looks like a very unlucky arrow has gone through the barrier. So Reinhardt most likely just dropped his barrier and the arrow has gone straight through and clonked to Zen on the head. That's an unlucky. But if you were positioned here, this gives you the chance to fire sleep darts in when you notice certain things happening. Because you will know when Reinhardt fire strikes, you can sleep dart him because there's, there is a literal animation delay provided you're closing up. Um, as he moves forward, as he's jumping, you know, you can try and get that sleep dying because if it hits the Reinhardt, then it's pretty much all over for their push and your team can just push in. But anyway, this isn't a bad position. This is not the end of the world. Anna's still there for primary healer. You're with your tanks, you're with the Brigitte. So you're safe, right? You're generally safe here. That nade was a total waste. This this is this is something here we need to... I mean, you can probably already tell at the moment, guys, I am sort of breaking this down more than usual because these level of games, um, little things like that, make an absolutely huge difference. That nade hit absolutely no one. Now, if that nade had hit somebody, so if we just go back here, 
Uh, let me just string this off. There we go. Uh, I think I've just pressed my Windows key. Here we go. If we go back here, watch this nade as it goes off. Watch. As Zen's about to die, or has he just died? Yeah, he's died. And lucky Zen. They're coming through. Right? As they're about to come through, what are you thinking? I'm going to anti-nade them, which is a fine call. I'm, I'm okay with that. Offensive nades are just as good as defensive nades most of the time. So he's coming through. They're coming through. They're pushing forward. We're looking to nade. We actually throw the nade as their barrier is deployed. So we basically have given them for free a win here. Um, we've just thrown away. This is an ability which will win the fight. So nobody's hit by that. I mean, we've got the plus heal there onto our Reinhardt, so it's not too bad. They're pushing forward. We're pushing back. This is kind of okay. Now we've got nano boost. Now this is where it gets desperate. I... Let's just see what you do with Nano Boost. But what I would say right now is we are kind of losing the fight, but Nano Boost can win the fight. Because remember, Nano Boost is a 600 HP heal and it turns you into a beast. So it can change the fight and it charges up quick. So right now, I'm thinking, okay, alarm bells are going off in my head. We took a good position. We've moved back. I'm just going to Nano. From Nano Brigitte. That's kind of okay. So lucky we didn't get the Reinhardt and he died. But we can push forward Brigitte. Sleep Dart into the grab, which is okay as well. And it looks like we're going to... We need to get in there. Like, we've got people we need to heal here. All right, all right, okay. So my worry with that is our Hanzo was super low there. But he managed to charge his ultimate and fire it off and kill everybody on the point. So it was kind of okay. All right, now we're taking up a position again. So what we need to do now is think about what have the enemy team got? What are we going to do to get rid of them? What's our next play? Can we get cheeky nades in early? Like, you don't always have to set up where you've been setting up there. Could you actually get a nade in early as they push around the corner? Because when they're purple, they lose. Like, that is... It's just 100% fact. They will, they will basically lose. The problem we've got now is a lot of their ultimates are coming online. So, we're going to need to be aware of that. I mean, we can see what they've got. So, Diva Bomb is going to be there, most likely. Are they going to have Grav? Hanzo, we know, used his ultimate, but... It's Hanzo, so he might be getting close to another one, although he's dead, so this is kind of okay. Brigitte, um, Rally, probably. So what we're looking at here, most likely, is I would... I mean, honestly, right now, I'd say, based off what I've just seen, this has got its ultimate, this has got its ultimate, and this probably has as well. This could, but we don't know. Like, basically, we don't have anything to deal with this, so we'd expect to lose this fight. So a call that could be made here, and again, this is coming from, you know, sort of more of a, a pro level. I don't know how this would work in... Um, actual just online ladder games, but I would call for us to get really aggressive here. I'd be like, guys, we're just going to attack them. As soon as they come around a corner, we're just going to rush them because make them panic, make them use their ultimates because if we don't do that, they're just going to walk into the point and we're going to lose. I mean, we've, we've almost got Reinhardt here, so there is scope for this combo with Brigitte and Reinhardt. Um, so Brigitte bashes the enemy Reinhardt, then you, you slam them. The scope for that. Maybe we get Zen up in this fight, but I don't know. I would be definitely looking to be getting aggressive here. <laughs> there we go. Let, let, let's combo. So Brigitte is asking for that, which must be for the shout from Ryan. Okay. So what's your plan now as the Anna? What is your plan? If this lands, you need a fat anti-nade on their whole team. Yeah, they're getting ready to do it. We're getting ready to do it. What? We're getting ready to do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Huge. Huge nade. Now, I think that if we just bring this back, I think... I th did Earth Shatter land here? It looked like Reinhardt maybe blocked it. But he got stunned. So your nade... Like, the, the, the thing here is your nade is always going to go in because he's, he's going to get bashed by Brigitte, right? He shields down. I think Reinhardt went too early. Yeah, Reinhardt's gone too early. Uh, I don't know. He's, he's caught... Looks like Diva's down on the ground, but this anti nade is absolutely phenomenal. That's won the fight. Okay, we actually we get their we get their um ult the, the, the Moira ult. We'll take that. So now what would be happening is okay. Now what would be happening is right. I know it's ladder, so I know there's a lot of like chatter going on in between the lines here. It's like oh yeah, you know everyone's talking about whatever. Um, I think somebody just asked if the grav got eaten, but obviously Zarya has not used grav in that fight. But what you need to do now is forget about chat, forget about talk, because if you seriously want to get to the highest levels of the game, you have to think, right, what have the enemy just used? What have they got next? What have we got next? And what did we use? And how can we beat the enemy? And what is my part in all of that plan? It's a lot of stuff that's going on. The good thing is, this Brigitte seems to be taking control with shot calling. So you don't really have to worry about setting up plans 
she seems to be doing that, but you can add to it. You can help it out. What you can say is they used Moira ult in that fight. We watched the Moira ult go off. What we're worried about now is where's their Brigitte ult? I never caught it. Maybe it did go off. I never actually caught it. Reinhardt, he must have his ultimate, right? Because our Rhine has just used theirs. So this has got to be online. We're expecting this. Diva Bomb. Yeah. What about this? This is going to kill us. That combo of Diva and, and Zarya is going to kill us if they've got that. Or even Zarya and um, Hanzo. If Hanzo's ult's probably coming back online. Because he's Hanzo. So we need to think, like, what are we going to, to do? If we inform our team based on what we've got, we can start to right, think sorry. about building a plan okay. to counter what the enemy are going to do. You, you get it in no time. That's unlucky with Zen there. That's really unlucky with Zen. Overextending. Like, what I would... Yeah, I'd obviously be calling for guys come back, you know, play safe, play choke. Play choke. Now we've got Nano again. So, like, this is going to be one of those fights where you're just going to have to throw Nano out on whoever the hell needs it. Because they're going to come strong. They've got a lot of ultimates. If we win this fight, it's a massive win. We're not expected to win. We've just lost Zen. Big nade. Okay, we go in, Ryan. Okay, cool. So, everything you just did there, perfectly fine. And you've also took up a decent position here where you're nice and safe. Um, hopefully, we get healed. Yeah, we do. It's cool. Uh, okay, whatever. <laughs> Hanzo. Whatever. That's Hanzo. That's just going to happen. What is this? Some sort of like insane flick headshot. One thing you did miss there was the nade. You should have thrown the nade at your feet. I think that was just panic, or I think you were trying to throw it at your team. But remember, if you're dead, you can't heal the team. So you have got priority over everything when it's all going yeah, yeah, yeah. to shit, basically, right? So if everyone's dying around you, you got you need to stay alive. So if you've got that nade, if you can hit yourself and your team, that's cool. But you've got to keep yourself alive. Like In that instance there, I mean, if we just jump back a little bit. Watch the nade here. Watch the nade. See the nade? It went nowhere. If that was into our feet, it would have anti-healed the Hanzo. We still would have lost the fight, don't get me wrong. Because he just headshot us and killed us. We can't stop that. But, you know, it, may, it might have helped. It might have put him off. He might have been like, oh, God. Here, we've got a bit of a problem. Um, any fight which is going down here, before the doors are open, it is sort of pointless. Like, it's not pointless, because if you can beat them, you can take control of the area, right? But here, I'd be worried, because we don't have our main tank. We do. And he seems to have just jumped off the top. What's he doing? We've got to get out of there now. Yeah, somebody just effed and blind in the chat. We've got to back off. We've lost Reinhardt. We cannot stay there. We need to back up. Yeah, you called it. You, call you see, you called it. So... Ah, this is kind of okay and, and also not okay. So let's watch this, right? Reinhardt kills himself because he's stupid. You know he's bad. Listen, you're moaning now. Now it should be, guys, back off, disengage, disengage, pull out, pull out. Whatever you want to say, run away. We do not want to stay here. We cannot stay here. We have to get out. So we back off. But instead, you carried on walking forward. You see what I mean with, like, these little minor changes to gameplay? Because we're not talking about, we're not talking about, like, mechanical skill. We're not talking about... If you know how to play Anna, of course you know how to play Anna. You are at this level of the game. It's just about these little decision-making things, which when you get better at doing that, you just get better uh, as a player. Like, it's almost about learning Overwatch and the subtleties of the game and the way everything interacts. That is what will take you to the next level. Anyway, we are backing off now, but we get a result here. Wow, we get a massive result. So we've got uh, Grav, we've got Moira, and we've got Hanzo Ultimate. That is a huge win for us. A massive win. That is such a massive win. Like, there is this concept in Overwatch of dry pushing, and it's it's very powerful when used properly. That wasn't a dry push. That was like you were all out of position. The enemy team went crazy. So let me just, let me just explain what this is. So dry pushes. Um, that wasn't a dry push, but the reason why I wanted to bring that up is... A dry push, essentially, let's just call it a dry P. It bleeds enemy ultimates, right, out of their team. It forces them to use it when you know your team is at a disadvantage. Or if, you know, you're going for the last fight, there's a 10 seconds to go in the game. Well, well, maybe not 10 seconds, 50 seconds to go. You can maybe get two fights in in that time if the, if the spawn's close. So your first plan is just to rush the enemy team. They'll panic, they start using ultimates, and then your next attack, they have less ultimates. So in theory, you've got more of a chance of winning. The other argument to this is you should try and win every fight, but sometimes using your head is a little bit, well, it's, it's, it's more intelligent, right? Higher IQ plays. Anyway, what has just happened there is they've used three ultimates. This is a massive win for us. So we should be celebrating this, basically, and going, they've used all their ults. It's fine. Just regroup. 
and then we can push out. And, and yeah, as you yeah, identified, yeah. they're not actually pushing the payload. As <laughs> <laughs> Zen was on the payload for some reason. See, like, yeah, your position's fine, you're staying with the team, it's cool. We should nade ourselves here, though. Like, we could have naded ourselves, then we would have had another nade available for the engage, because, like, we're down on HP here. It's not a lot, but it's oh, enough that right. it could cost us. Yeah, graph, graph, graph. So think, now, what I don't want you to do here, and I hope you don't, is give up this position unless something really warrants it, because this is a really good position. So you and Hans are on the high ground. Looks like our graph's going in, so that's cool. Okay, so what? This is not good play. Why do you even need to do this? Look at what's available to you here. We've lost our Reinhardt, right? We've, we, give, me, give me the pen. We've lost our Reinhardt. That's fine. You can see there, Hanzo. You can see three people in a grav. Somebody else there. You do not need to jump. You do not need to go down here. That is just completely pointless. You can throw the nade into this mess from the high ground and start sh doing damage to them if you want or healing. You know, you've got a guy down here. I think your Hanzo's jumped off. Uh, your team is around here, so it's going to be difficult to get to them. So I guess in extreme circumstances you might want to jump down here but again that's probably going to be a death sentence for you because well all the enemy team are there so let's just see what you do here remember high ground is <laughs> do we really need to throw the bionade at point blank range into them when we could have achieved that from above so our hanzo is just going to kill them anyway but do you understand how you made yourself vulnerable we win the fight we win the fight but you made yourself intentionally vulnerable so if we just jump back to this watch this yeah, graph, graph, what is the decision making here right we've got high ground we're going to grab them we've got, we've got high ground we're going to grab them our hands with us grav goes in where's the grav where's the grav where's the grav i've seen the grav because i've gone forward i've gone back now i've gone forward again i could nade this and i could heal our hands who's jumped down to the left no i'm going to jump off see how this is really stupid to them point blank and i'm going to anti-nade them which i could have done from above and then hands is going to kill them and fine, you sleep dart into it, it's fine. Because, you know, whatever. But the, the problem there is the positioning. The jumping okay, off it's okay, it's okay, was not great. Because somebody could have just turned around and killed you, right? I'm gonna sleep you probably still would have... Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> okay, that's unlucky. Well, I, yeah, that's unlucky. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It don't matter, you'll get back to the fight. But yeah, that's unlucky. Uh, that's trying to, trying to be a bit... Uh, you're trying to style on him. Nice cost you. So, uh... <laughs> All right, let's see where this goes. So we've got Nano. Remember what I've been saying. What's the plan? Look at Zen. We need to help Zen. Nano and Zen's fine, but Zen already just used this ult to get out. See, the problem there is Zen's ultimate is much more valuable than than yours. But Zen was just reacting, and like unless you were going to tell him, Zen, I'll, I'll Nano, Zen, I'll, I'll save you, I'll Nano you. Zen, you can't really blame him for what he did in a way. <laughs> Although, yeah, you know, Zen's using transcendence to save themselves generally isn't the best idea. But in that instance, all right. It looks like we're getting hands out. Okay. We don't. I mean, we don't care about that. But remember, track the ultimates. Just try and do that. Like, try and add that into your play. Just track ultimates. So, and also call out swaps because we can see there's a, a very clear swap here. Winston. Um, and again, I don't think you're doing this enough throughout the game is pressing tab just to look at what the enemy team comp have got and then telling your team. If you notice a lot of pros, if you watch pros stream or you get the chance to watch pros scrim or anything like that, they will, the supports will constantly call out when there's a swap. They're, all the team is constantly looking at the score screen, right? When there's downtime, they'll be like, uh, they've just picked up a Winston. Reinhardt swapped to Winston. So this means they're more dive orientated. Not that much more because they're still keeping the rest of the team in a way. I mean, we've got the Lucio now on that. Uh, actually, we had the Lucio for a while. So ignore what I was saying there. But this Winston is the swap. So we've got a different tank. So calling that out to your team will help. But I think for you, just trying to be a bit more proactive with tracking ultimates uh, I don't have, will help. I don't have nano. Okay. Uh, okay. So, diva bomb traded for grav. Monkey sleep. Monkey sleep. Nice. But we've lost this, so we need to get the hell out. Run away. Like we just need to turn around and run away. There's two options here at this point. We either just jump off the bridge straight away and go for a fast reset, or we turn around and run away. We don't look at them and keep shooting them and trying to get anything off them because the only thing that's going to happen here is we will die. We might get some ultimate charge, but they will. Like Abrigate is dead. So whatever. 
we're still see we walked forward again you, you see like this is like a very small minor thing and a lot of you guys watching this video are like start what the hell you don't have to go into this much detail but you really do because as soon as you know that fight starts you turn around you run away or you commit suicide because then you're back with your team faster this is just wasting time and then we're gonna die so we even actually killed ourselves so you you knew what you needed to do you just didn't do it faster yeah, i couldn't survive there so Okay, so Hanzo ult's been used again. So we, we know that they've used Bomb and Hanzo, so we should be saying this to them. I could not because of the deal of Bomb, I'm sorry. It's okay, uh, let them have it. That's a good call, yeah, let them have it. But we've almost got Nano now, so we can think about doing something with Nano. I haven't really spoke too much about your sleep dart usage. I think on the whole it's not too bad. What I would do though is... Um, like, I do this on a play, Anna, so I'm at fault for this. Uh, let's just hold the sleep dart thing for a moment. Let's talk about nano because this, like nano, th this nano here. Obviously, as soon as Zarya gets nano, she's going to be thinking, "Oh yeah," and she's going to rush forward and kill people. It's an okay nano, but tell them before you do it, even if it's just like, um, "Zarya, I'm going to nano you." You're screaming at them, then you nano them. Gives them a little bit of notice. What I generally like for Anna, and I think this works really well but i think it probably only works in like a more structured environment but there's no reason why you can't do it on ladder is count down like three two one nano uh, what what is this no no here we go it looks like mano <laughs> no no nano like three because let's just bring this back right let's, let's bring this back but this was more of a more of like a, a reactionary um one so okay let's take a look at this so you're going forward Whatever. Actually, we're not going forward. Yeah, we are. Here we go. Okay, okay. Zarya, I'm going to nano you. Three, two, one, nano. Probably wouldn't have worked in that example because it was more of just the I'm just going to nano you sort of thing and push forward. But the, the big question is, did we even need the nano there? It has secured the fight, but what did it actually achieve? Let's have a look at this. Let's go back. Let's try and work out why you've nanoed here. So we've killed their Winston, so they've got no primary tank. We're pushing forward with an advantage. We see a red heal sign. We healed that up. We basically don't need a nano here, do we? If you think about it. Because they were already disengaging there at that point. I'm not saying it was a bad nano, but I'm not saying it was a great nano. But if you are going to nano somebody and there's, uh, like, let's say, more of a plan to nanoing them, give them a countdown before you do it. Don't just instantly nano. Obviously, sometimes you will have to just nano just to keep them alive, and that's fine. I think there you kind of were panicking a little bit, and yes, we have it's okay. They got about one good fight and one Sarah fight. I like this. I like this, yeah. Yeah, so like 45 seconds to go. They could bum rush you just to try and dry push you. Then they could come with an actual push. One thing I don't really like, though, is... I Like, this is debatable there. You fired in your sleep dart, and it, it, I think it hit the Winston bubble. But what is going to happen here with that, that Winston? What's he going to try and do? Or what's the Diva going to try and do? They're going to try and dive in on someone. So if you've got sleep dart... You can sleep dart them as they come in, and that would screw them up. Or maybe, you know, you could still miss or whatever, but... So that's a nice nade there, beautiful. So imagine here, right, you can see the Winston. So imagine here now, it sounds like they're using sound barrier. I think we just caught the start of sound barrier. They're going to push hard. When they push hard, imagine having sleep. I mean, sleep's on five seconds, four. Winston comes in with a bubble... Okay, let's see how this goes. But we should be able to keep Zen alive. I'm pausing this really slow because we're just trying to... Like, this is an accuracy thing and it's working. See, lower levels just wouldn't be able to do this. Zen pops transcendent, so he's okay. But imagine if we had our sleep dart there. There was a very small window where we could have put him to sleep. And then we win. Ah, unlucky. Okay, two kills. Winston's behind us. Get the monkey, 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 monkey. Good call. I was about to say, where's the call, you know? Okay, whatever, he's dead. Okay, if we can delay Lucio, that's good. Not... Uh, this happens a lot, right? I mean, there's, there's 5.9 seconds left to go. So, with McCree just popping his ult, it's like, mm, whatever. But think about, like, what have they got? Like, what could they use? Uh... Well, we know they've still got a D.Va. They could have D.Va bomb. So is that a re-engage? But, I mean, there's three seconds to go here. I don't think anything's really going to happen. 
But like, these are what you have to think, right? Because maybe something totally stupid happens and there's like a six kill with a diva bomb. I I, I'm, I doubt that's going to happen. I see. Well, I could be about to eat my, my words. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, there's a Moira ult and they're just using everything. Uh, this is slightly worrying. This is slightly worrying. Oh my God. So they did re-engage with what I kind of predicted, but it didn't really, it wasn't as effective, <laughs> which was a good job of getting a six kill. That'd be totally ridiculous. But... They're investing a lot of ultimates here. You're dead. You're the primary healer. Um, could you have played a little bit safer there? In fact, let's just roll it back and think about what we could have done. So do we even need to go forward here? Look, it's kind of like we've killed two of them. They've killed two of us. We're healing here. And Reinhardt's over there. Do we need to go forward here? This decision here is a little bit weird. Like, we could easily run this way and get into cover that way. But instead, we decide to go this way. I think it's just because you're like, my team is there, and I want the payload to cover me. This is pretty lucky, though. I think Reinhardt saved you, actually, from behind from that. Anyway, now they're using everything. This is a problem. Unlucky, dude. Unlucky. What the fuck? So it's just a... Uh, oh. Hanzo's killing people. Wait for me. Wait for me. You've almost got Nano. You should get Nano, actually, off the healing here. We just nano Ryan, <laughs> right? Nano? Yeah, he wants it. Give it him! Yeah, I love it. Okay, good. That's all right. right. That's good. Okay, so we managed to hold them. So let's go forward. Uh, let's see what kind of team can we get. So can you guys see already, right? Obviously, with this overanalyzed, we've not really focused on, you know, basic stuff like we do with other uh, levels of the game. Because if you're in Master... And if you're close to GM, you know how to play a hero. You understand team comms. But I think a lot of the problems typically come from... What's this? Warning, your subscription is at risk. The hell? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Best pay for that. Also, I'll have no uh, video editing software. <laughs> All right. Three tank, two support. Three support. We're trying to do goats. Oh, no. So, yeah, it's normally like a team comp issue. Um, like, if they just completely counterpick you, then, like, what can you do? But it was pretty fairly even, evenly matched, I think, that, that first round. So it looks like we're going to go for some pharmacy now. Which can work. I mean, let's be real, it can work. I mean, it's, still, it's a really strong duo. Depends what the enemy's got. Um, I can't hear what he's saying. So, Okay, we're going to swap to goats now. So we're going to go like Moira or back to Anna. You can do goats with Anna. All right. So Moira, very simple. What you're looking to do here, just stay with the team. Heal orbs out. Heal the team. Just don't die, basically. <laughs> it's pretty easy. This is for Moira. In fact, it's pretty easy for everybody in this kind of comp. You just run forward healing. Yeah, it's fine. Heal orb out, though. We could have had a heal orb out a bit, a bit earlier. That's fine. Yeah, all right. I mean, you just pretty much stay with the team. This is fine. Zarya, 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 Zarya. <laughs> Man's lucky. <laughs> you gotta love Hanzo when he just kills you for no reason. Good job. It doesn't matter. Your team have won anyway. So, Good job. easy take of the point. That's why Goats is so strong. Now, Goats, for you guys out there that might not be aware of what, what that is, it's basically three support, three tanks, and you just run in and take the point. You want them to fight you on the point. Uh, it's really hard for teams to counter it. Looks like we're going to do some uh, sensitivity changes. <laughs> Guess you haven't been playing much more than this season. I mean, we could swap back to Anna here. I guess we've almost got our ult, so we're kind of stupid. I mean, in terms of your ult, I don't mind just using the ultimate whenever. Yeah. Like, th there is a thing here, though. I guess we just pause this because I don't mind using Moira's ultimate whenever because it's just it, it charges so fast. But normally using ultimates here before we even push the payload through can be a little bit uh, like almost like a heavy investment. Because remember, it's it's in your advantage here, the spawn distances. So even if we lose this fight, it kind of doesn't matter. If the enemy team want to invest ultimates into it, it kind of doesn't matter. So we kind of traded there. We used Coalescence, they used Coalescence, we're getting pushed back, we're dead. Nah, we sh I'd swap Moira here. Like, she's alright, first point attack with what you did, but... 
I mean, something like, I mean, you could just go back to Anna here and it'd be totally fine. See, again, this comes back to, or, or even Mercy would be okay. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> okay, back to Anna. So it, it looks like you just sort of like, whatever, I'm not playing this hero because I keep dying. Oh, no, hang on, we changed again. What are we going for? Was that a Mercy? Okay, so we're going for the Pharmacy. Okay, everyone's getting killed, but this is fine. This is fine. Does it remain calm? Oh, uh, what is Azari doing with that? That's an unlucky. That's a bad play by Zarya. I don't know why Zarya used a grab. I'd Anna, to be honest, and my fucking mercy. But then play Anna. Like, to be, to be fair, you haven't really... You're not, you're not playing with Pharmacy. That combo is nowhere to be seen. Because everyone's getting smashed, so you need to heal them on the low ground, so it's kind of okay. But, yeah, I mean, like, in fact, let's just pause this, because this is actually a pretty interesting discussion. You have flat out said you would rather play Anna. Right now, in this meta, Anna is strong. Um, Mercy, yeah, it's Mercy's still good, but Anna, it's totally fine if you want to play Anna. And yeah, Anna plays fine, so don't be afraid of just playing Anna. See, there's another Coalescence. I mean, you could argue as well that Moira still would have been effective here because we're just still fighting in this choke. Positioning is good here, like, because we, we, we don't really care. Like, they're investing in ultimates, whatever, they're pushing us. We've weathered the storm. We do Let's have go. Valkyrie, which we are using, which, again, is fine. I don't mind this. I mean, you could whip out your pistol and shoot her. <laughs> It's a difficult one. <laughs> this is like... We didn't really get anywhere, which is unfortunate. Yeah. She probably swapped time. Because I feel like... Well, McCree's killed three of them. What the hell? I, I, yeah, you're, you're not really doing anything as Mercy. So I, don't, I think that's a good swap. I mean, obviously we... Um, our Pharaoh swapped to Hanzo, then swapped to Genji. All right, uh, like you see, this area is so good for Anna. Massive long sight lines. You can remain relatively safe. Sounds like they've got a tracer on my days. <laughs> Unlucky, but you could argue, hey, you should know this Dip is coming in. He asked. That doesn't sound very nice. Ridiculous. <laughs> that's a schlecht. I think that's German, right? You sound German to me, but you could quite easily be from another European country, and so I sound like an absolute ignorant saying, I'm oh, you sound German. Castle. I'm coming through Castle. All right. We're winning the fight here anyway, so it's all good. So it's all Gucci, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got hands owed for like the fourth time in this game, unlucky. Actually insane, dude. Okay, well, we've got three minutes here, so this is loads of time. We can farm ults. We can, we can just do whatever here. This is going to be fine. But, like, I wish you were looking at Tab more, like I alluded to at the uh, in the defensive phase. Maybe trying to orchestrate ultimate usage. What's the plan? You know, like, Amakri went to high ground there, used his ult. See, you're doing so much more work as Anna. Oh, God. So, what's the plan here? Disengage. Yep, because we've lost everyone. No, just run away. Because if we die here, this is bad. All right. So, what we're going to do now? We've got Nano. We can engage with Nano. Oh, no. See, so you're alternating between hit scan and projectile. Fire is fine. I don't really see any issues with that. But, well, like, what's the plan here? Look. You are in control here. You can win this fight. You need to go, guys. What this is what we're just we're gonna hit them hard, fast. Like it doesn't have to be rocket science. You can just be like, right, smash them, just rush them. Ryan, I'll nano you. That's all you've got to do. And just rush in and hit them with it. That's it. That is literally it. That's not. Yes, let's go. Or even better, we've got nano blade. Now I didn't know we've got nano blade because I don't. You're not pressing tab. 
But hats off to our Genji. He said to us, I've got Nano Blade. So you're like, okay, let's do it. There's the combo. That's the win condition. This is what we need to look for more often when you're playing Anna. You need to find these win conditions, these combos, because you're Anna, right? Genji's going to work awesome with you. Reinhardt can work. Soldier 76 can work amazingly well with you. There's a lot of heroes you can combo with, and they just kill everybody. And you've got to do more of that. Like, you've only done this because this guy has said to you, I've got Blade, which is good. Good Genji play off him. But I prefer it if you were in control. So let's see how this plays out. Okay, go, go, go. Okay. We've got him eventually. That's fine. He's not actually doing anything. <laughs> well, okay, he is doing something. Whoa, McCree's just killing everyone. Well played, Zarya. Oh, it's unlucky. It's unlucky. Okay, so that's not really... Ah, Like, what... Okay, let's just go back. Like, what ultimates have they used here in this fight? Watch it again. So think think of this from playing the game perspective, right? All right, so we've got Nano Blade. Right, okay, let's Nano. So what I'm going to do is Nano the Genji. Then I'm going to try and keep people up, but I'm also going to try and check. What right, so they use Transcendence. High Noon. Coalescence. We use Grav. We're disengaging. We unluckily died to this. Right, so we tell them what ultimates they've just used. Alright guys, they've used three ults there. We can win the next fight. They've got no Transcendence. Which was a misplay there from the Genji. Because we should have expected... And even from us, really, we should have expected their Zen to have Transcendence. So we need to force the Transcendence before we use Blade. You can't just Blade into Transcendence, even if you've got Nano Blade. I mean, you can Blade through it with Nano Blade, kind of. But you, obviously, you can't kill Zen, but you can kill some nice other targets. But it's still not great. That is a good pick. Nice That's, one, nice uh, one, nice one, nice one. It's unlucky, but... Ich bin nicht in this... Ich bin, yeah, it's German. <laughs> I am, right? It doesn't mean he wants to throw him in the bin. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Go on, press tab. Alright, sweet. Okay, so hopefully this has been a good help because a lot of the problems here are not... Obviously not how you play Anna. You're playing Anna well. It's just more advanced stuff. So if we if we look at things like... It, it's it, I always go back to this, but it's the plan. What is the plan? Like, But the plan is more than just... Okay, we're going to engage with this. We're going to do that. The plan actually extends to the what we're going to call the WC, not the wash cupboard, the win condition. You need a win condition. What is the win condition? Every fight has a win condition. That depends on how you're going to engage, what ultimates you're going to use. Um, if you get a fast pick, that means you can just go fast because, well, you've killed one of the enemies, so now it's a 5v6. I think the statistics are something crazy. Like It's like an 80% fight win chance if you've got plus one player on your team at the start of a fight. So, if one of the enemy dies, you just rush them. I think, though, overall, um, you are a good player. And you can quite easily get into GM. You just need to be a little bit better with the very minute decisions. Like, the one that really stands out in my head is when we were on the high ground. And we just sort of... I don't I don't know why we jumped off. We just were like, hey, let's just jump down. That was crazy. Like we should, That should never have entered our mind. The reason it has, or, or, or why it has, is a bit worrying to me. So, you need to get that out of your system. Anyway, I hope this has been a help. If this, uh, if you guys have enjoyed this video, then like the video. Remember, you can uh, leave a comment below. Click the bell as well, because that will uh, alert you to when new videos go live. I've been Stylosa. This is Unit Lost. If you enjoyed the video, then like the video. And I'll catch you lovely lot on the next one. Toodaloo.